thank you, Iveta. Thank you for the introduction and uh, good uh, afternoon to everyone. Uh, <clears throat> there's uh, not much to add about uh, myself, uh, so I will uh, just uh, proceed further with a few words about the panel, which I will uh, focus on uh, towards uh, future universities theme. And we are happy to have with us uh, three representatives of the partner institutions within the UDRES uh, Alliance. Uh, I'll start with the lady, Agita Livina, the director of Institute of Social, Economic and uh, Humanities Research at uh, Vizieme University of Applied Sciences. Uh, uh, hello, thank you for joining us. Uh, we have uh, Pedro Dominguinhos, uh, president of uh, the Polytechnic Institute of uh, Setubal. Uh, Hello. Welcome, Pedro. Hello. And we have uh, Radu Vasiu, the president of the University Senate uh, of the Polytechnica University, Timisoara. Hello, Radu. Hello to everybody. Uh, before we start, uh, and we will give uh, each of the panelists uh, three, uh, five uh, minutes uh, to, to share their view about uh, the UDRES. What do they expect as the institution, as the uh, leaders of their institutions, what uh, they see as the benefits. Let me say a few words about you, Russia, and uh, how did I get here? Uh, as uh, Iveta said, uh, Russia is the European representation of uh, professional higher education, universities of applied sciences and uh, similar institutions. We have about uh, 43 full members, uh, about 67 uh, members in uh, 35 countries. Uh, that brings uh, National Association of uh, Rectors or uh, representatives of uh, professional higher education like the Portuguese Council of uh, Polytechnics and individual institutions. Uh, that uh, all together represents about 640 higher education institutions in Europe, but also outside of Europe, but obviously the main focus is on Europe. And uh, we estimate that that may bring together about one and half million students at uh, these institutions. So it's uh, quite a pool of uh, experience and uh, expertise. I feel extremely committed to this session because I remember that at some moment we were discussing with uh, several colleagues what would be the, the development in European universities. And I found that uh, UDRES uh, might be looking for some other partners and uh, I I'm happy to say that uh, I tried to connect the, the missing partners or the, the, the other partners to, to the partnership. And I think uh, that was a great uh, decision because then it covered the full spectrum of uh, European representation. Eurasia has been proposed, promoting uh, European universities since the uh, very beginning. We are engaged in a consultation with the European Commission since the very start uh, moments when uh, it was not necessarily clear what to expect from uh, European universities. We have tried to advocate as well for more diversity. And in fact, uh, when the first call brought uh, 17 alliances where none of them would have been uh, University of Applied Sciences, uh, then we tried to uh, sort of raise the attention and awareness of a need for diversity. And well, here we are. Amazing. Uh, uh, in the current uh, second call, uh, there were about 25 to 28 institutions, depends how would they uh, describe themselves, which would, which would correspond to the profile. And we have only recently had the session with uh, those who were interested from these institutions to discuss what we could do. And uh, I guess that uh, Russia role would be to raise the policy issues, uh, try to contribute to the joint uh, discussion. And in fact, uh, last Friday, uh, uh, Tina has mentioned that already but in her uh, presentation, there was the stakeholders consultation on uh, future universities and uh, uh, European universities. And uh, the, the, the discussions which we have had uh, uh, last week helped a lot to sort of pay attention and to raise the specific uh, issues. So that's uh, the background. We would be happy to learn from the experience. I would also invite uh, those who are following us, and it's a still impressive uh, number of people considering uh, the time, uh, to 
raise questions in the chat uh, to ask uh, what should be sort of uh, addressed by the panelists. But now let's go to the three panelists. May I ask each of you to say, well, we know which institutions are you coming from, but what would be your view of the vision of uh, you dress? What do you expect? What do you see as the benefit from your side within a few minutes? And as we agreed to, we will start uh, with the order which I had formerly. Pedro, uh, will you start? Uh, Okay, I can start. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here, and more than a pleasure, it's an honor to be a part of the Elders Alliance. Um, and uh, for us, um, it's um, amazing the the path that you already run in the last two years. And um, for us, this alliance is is uh, and as Tina said in the morning, and we always said it. And we uh, uh, spread this vision across uh, our academic and non-academic staff and with the students. It's, no, it's not a project. For us, it's a process of change and especially is a process of involvement and engagement within all the stakeholders and with the, uh, the region. So for us, is um, we are in the core of the new um, universities, and I will simplify, uh, call it universities, because in Portugal at the moment we have a discussion uh, about the denomination, but um, it's we are in the core of um, building new universities and we are in the core uh, or in the center of the um, changing the way as uh, higher education institutions can um, uh, make a new future happen. And um, if you look to the, the environment, and especially for the COVID, uh, for the, the pandemics, and for the, the, all the, the changes that we are facing, um, nowadays, um, our education institutions are crucial actors and implementing the change. And the society um, is demanding more and more from our education institutions. So um, looking for these, uh, as Europeans uh, and uh, as um, part of these alliances, uh, of this alliance, for us uh, is a process of change. It's a process of be one key uh, uh, actors in this process of building a new futures, and also is a process of uh, real involvement of all the actors uh, trying to prepare this new future. So uh, it's um, be in the center of a new way of delivering our education. And for elders spe specifically, uh, it's a process of be more connected uh, with our regions. As polytechnics, one of our main missions is to create more competitiveness for the regions, to promote more cohesion and to promote more inclusion. And through this process of uh, Eldros, um, uh, we believe that uh, we can uh, get these main objectives uh, in the future. For us, uh, also, is a process of connecting more and more uh, training, research, and innovation. And we think that by uh, applying the, all the objectives of the, um, the Eldros, we can get more from the territories from the firms, from uh, all the institutions, and promote a better um, uh, uh, process of training of our students and to develop more uh, research with impact into the society. So for us, Elders is also a process of more impact into the society. And last but not least, is a process of uh, trying to uh, create um, uh, uh, a common goal about European citizens, about, uh, of course, looking to the di diversity of all of our institutions, but by promoting this internationalization is also a, pro a process of uh, contributing for uh, the process of a, a, a more integrated Europe uh, that is fundamental uh, uh, in our um, uh, uh, objectives. And uh, we can do it this by implementing or considering diversity 
and of course by this uh, process of interculturality that for us is fundamental. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, a lot of uh, big words. Let's see how you will be able to uh, address them jointly. So let's see uh, what uh, would be Agita's point of view. How, how do you see uh, your dress and uh, your institution in it? What brought you? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining this uh, late uh, session. Uh, and uh, I am uh, representing New City in the region. And I would like to underline also that uh, the initiative uh, to establish our university uh, was a bottom-up uh, approach 25 years ago from uh, local municipalities. Uh, but at the moment, uh, we are a state uh, university. And as uh, Pedro mentioned, then also in Latvia, uh, we have uh, reforms in uh, higher education and also in uh, research uh, system, uh, how to uh, make uh, changes in, in the management of higher education institutions, and uh, also about uh, uh, research uh, funding. Uh, but uh, today, uh, during the uh, conference, uh, we heard uh, many times uh, that uh, we need uh, to work in uh, multitasking uh, uh, conditions. And uh, I can uh, give my uh, view from uh, three uh, um, uh, aspects, from three angles. Uh, I am in charge of research uh, unit, uh, some kind of administrative duty. And I am a researcher and also I am professor. I am working with uh, students. And uh, very often uh, we, we have uh, challenging from our uh, uh, national uh, stakeholders uh, that uh, we are a small university and uh, one of the main measurements are uh, figures uh, but uh, I would like to uh, mention that it's not uh, the only uh, way how we can uh, measure uh, quality of uh, education research and innovations uh, that uh, we need uh, indicators how we can uh, uh, measure uh, the uh, future uh, universities in uh, Europe. But uh, our main uh, expectations from the Eldrest project is that uh, uh, we would like that it will be emphasized that uh, identity of small regional universities in context of uh, European uh, universities in initiative that uh, small uh, is small according to the number of uh, students and researchers uh, but uh, we can achieve also uh, 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 excellent uh, results and outcomes in uh, research and uh, innovations by uh, active engagement of uh, uh, students uh, industry and our uh, regional uh, stakeholders and uh, at the moment, our university is outlining a new uh, development strategy and our uh, region uh, also is drafting new strategy and it's a very uh, good uh, um, opportunity uh, to use this experience from our uh, network uh, to uh, develop uh, sustainable and smart strategies for university and the region. At the moment, I will stop and give an uh, opportunity to other panelists. Sound, please, Michael. Sorry, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, last but not least, Radu, what would be uh, the view from uh, Timishwara? Thank you, Michael. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to gather uh, with all our partners in this project. Um, thank you, first of all, Pedro, for uh, being uh, so uh, comprehensive in, in presenting uh, the expectation of our dress. So I will just try to be a little more specific about our university and our role in this project and our expectations. So first of all, uh, about myself, I'm um, a professor of the 
uh, Faculty of Electronics, Telecommunication and Information Technologies and Director of the Multimedia Center of the University and at the same time from the administrative point of view, I'm the President of the Senate of the University. Uh, from uh, this perspective, I will start with telling that uh, Polytechnic University of Timisoara was uh, established uh, exactly 100 years ago and uh, immediately after the re reunification of Romania. And it was uh, the only university in Romania and uh, especially as in the west part of Romania, which has been established as a technical university, not as a, as a comprehensive university. Mm -hmm. This was for the beginning as the mission which has been asked by the uh, economic or social environment. So we've been asked to be established as a university to support the community, to support the development of uh, the region, which is the, still the mission in these days. At the same time, uh, uh, we were established uh, from the beginning as a research university. Our uh, teaching was always very based on uh, practical things and uh, we offer from the beginning a bachelor, master and PhD uh, programs. So uh, this is uh, another thing which uh, should be mentioned. At the same time, if we are speaking about changes, Timisoara is the city of the revolution in 1989 in uh, Romania and uh, we are uh, uh, happy to say and proud to say at the same time that we are still consider ourselves uh, as uh, a head part of uh, the changes in uh, the educational and society changes in, in Romania. So we are looking very much forward to uh, new changes, to new opportunities. And those opportunities for us are, uh, first of all, uh, linked to uh, the region, to the Euro region in which we are belonging, where we have a very strong economy. We have especially uh, automotive and ICT economy, but also some other manufacturing uh, industries. So we are very much based on the industry, not on uh, services. Uh, the region is uh, sustainable and uh, it's looking for green and uh, uh, sustainable development for the future. And this is also part of the mission of the university. And we are very much looking forward to do that in the future. Uh, as I said, we are a technical university. In Mishwara, we have four state universities. Beside us, there is the University of West, which is dealing more or less with sciences, with economy, law, and so on. It's the University of Medicine and the University of Agronomy. So uh, we already established an alliance between the four state universities and we are cooperating together. And one of the visions for the future might be that we are seeing us uh, in the future, not as four different universities, but maybe as a, a single uh, metropolitan university, a big one. This is one of the part of our thoughts for the future. Uh, on this, the other hand, uh, we are very much looking to uh, reflect the changes of the society uh, and uh, we are looking for digital transformation. Uh, we look ourselves and we expect in about 10 years time to have uh, um, all the services completely digitalized and uh, we, for the moment, we are quite ahead in Romania in terms of uh, digital education in uh, providing uh, a very good um, uh, environment for digital students. So it was not such a big uh, uh, demand for us to move toward the digital uh, learning uh, in this time because we were in a way uh, quite prepared for that. But we see the future as probably blended learning. So we don't think that uh, we will get back immediately after the pandemic to exactly what it was before. On the other hand, another vision for the future is that uh, we feel that the involvement of university and industry will uh, become even bigger and will be part of the smart regions and uh, the smart uh, uh, development, sustainable uh, development of the uh, whole area. Uh, and uh, we already starting working with industry for uh, changing the curricula, changing the syllabuses, 
doing some joint uh, project together and so on. And we feel very much that this is going to be uh, one of the key challenges for the future, for the vision of a, a future university. And we think that probably we'll move from uh, providing mainly uh, first degree courses to providing more courses for companies, providing short coursing, which are developing new competencies and the new skills. And uh, this is why we are also looking for uh, micro credentials for uh, short courses and uh, for uh, getting uh, all the, um, let's say, recognition for all, for those space. And this is why we are seeing us very connecting with the proposal on the ideas on blockchain technologies and so on. We are also involved in, uh, in that. So let's say these are the main pillars and the ideas for the future, but uh, I will be glad to answer to any other questions which uh, were raised during this uh, discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Renu. Thank you. And I can see that the, the chat has started, although not the way which I would have expected. Uh, but there is a request to Vala Data Corner. If you can please switch off your camera. That's uh, not that you should uh, not contribute to the discussion, but uh, if you wish, please do that in the chat. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, we understand uh, the, the focus, and uh, as I said, there's a number of uh, great words, great uh, intentions. Uh, we also heard several times that this is not the project, this is the sort of long-term commitment and uh, the, the partnership. I was impressed uh, listening to the previous session how much sort of a focus there was on uh, various uh, digital tools and uh, the developments, and uh, I guess that in, especially in these days, one would expect that uh, the future universities will move to that uh, digital way. But I have to say that I'm not necessarily that sure what would be the, the developments. And there's ongoing discussion on what would be the future of higher education. How would we see that? And I think it would be good to start with a bigger picture than get to how you dress and your institutions get uh, fit in it. Uh, Two years ago, when there was the time when the conferences were held physically, we had uh, great times. Uh, we had uh, something which was called uh, the University of Applied Sciences Leadership Forum, bringing together leaders from different European uh, institutions. And the question was, uh, how would you describe the future university in one word? I can challenge you with that. But I can help you as well, because uh, to, to my surprise, there was not much sort of description of the processes or the feed or the details, but it was about uh, openness, lifelong learning, focus on the mission and the diversification. There was the partnership. So the things which I can feel are probably part of what all of you have uh, addressed within your contribution. How would you see the, the, the development uh, of the future higher education? Ten years from now, what would you expect that uh, higher education would uh, look like? We heard something, but uh, maybe you would like to add anything. And the colleagues in the chat, please do that as well. So again, should we start with Pedro? I will change the order later on. Uh, unmute yourself, Pedro, please. Of course, you are uh, uh, trying us to uh, not to guess, but to imagine. That's the way that uh, this alliance could be. I think we can build on our creativity, on our idea of the future university. And um, this is one of the main um, advantages and challenges that we have with this um, uh, Eudrus Alliance and with this European University. And if you look to uh, the Bologna follow-up group, uh, five years ago, in the final declaration, there's no uh, few references to short cycles, to uh, diversification in uh, higher education institutions and long life learning. So within, in the last three or four years, there was a huge, um, I will say, um, new approaches 
and new um, vision visions for the role of our education institutions. And if you look in nowadays for national uh, um, recovery and resilient plans, the role of our education institutions trying to uh, promoting the uh, social cohesion, the competitiveness is fundamental. So what uh, how, how I will see the, the future in, uh, in, in the future, we need to deal uh, with more uh, with different uh, publics in our education, uh, more diverse, which mean more customized ways of delivering training and education. That's why diversification is so important. If you look back 10 years ago, we have bachelors, masters, PhDs, and nothing more, or few more, of course, I'm exaggerating. But in nowadays, we are delivering a lot of different types of higher education uh, courses, degree programs, not only to target different um, uh, publics, but also to deal with the, the needs of uh, different organizations. Second, we need um, to deal with different contexts of learning. Uh, in the previous sessions of Elders, there are several ideas of uh, dealing with uh, several uh, learning contests. Virtual contests, MOOCs, uh, in the environment, in the firms, in the hospitals, which means that the classroom is no longer the, the battlefield uh, I'm exaggerating, of course, of learning and of uh, education institution, which means that we need to bring together in our societies or in our, our education institution different types of actors. This means that we need to incorporate different voices in the way that we are um, design the, the universities of the future. Third, is related with our regions. And the Elders Alliance is based on the, the, the idea of regions, of the living labs, of co-ideation, of co-innovation, and to try to contribute to the development of the region. So listen the region, but more than listen, I think the, uh, the higher education institutions need to be uh, one of the main actors in the uh, uh, regional ecosystems of innovations, which means that this relationship with the outside actors are fundamental. That's why uh, the uh, smart specialization strategies are put in place in all Europe, and we are dealing with these uh, uh, ideas. And we need to be more democratic, and I will finalize by here. We need to try to include uh, and to incorporate society in our uh, uh, plans and uh, try to democratize science. Thank you, Pedro. Well, uh, rich both uh, vision. Uh, I, I see that they're starting the discussion. So before I give the floor to uh, Eveta, uh, I'm sorry, to Agita, I uh, just want to mention that uh, uh, Diana, uh, mentioned that uh, some of you, if not all, mentioned that your university is not the largest, that you are in a sort of, a, the, let's say, the remote uh, region. How do you see the, then the future of, uh, of your university within this partnership? Because I believe that you would subscribe to what uh, Pedro said. How do you see the future development of uh, UDRES in that? Is it uh, like... Uh, one joint uh, university with the multinational locations? Is it uh, something uh, loose as the network? I think it's quite uh, interesting for those who are following you. If I understood, most of them would be people from the institutions and your, uh, your partners. And there's also the comment on a sort of a participation in living clubs, uh, short courses, getting uh, credits through different uh, sort of flexible uh, learning arrangements from uh, Patricia. Uh, it's obviously part of the discussion on micro credentials, but uh, how would you see all of that within the partnership of, uh, of UDRES? I guess we, we are starting to feel what would be the overall development. How do you see your role and the role of, uh, of the power of the UDRES? Agita. 
Okay, thanks. Uh, I will start uh, with the uh, first uh, uh, question about uh, our vision of a future university in next uh, 10 years. At first, I think uh, one of the most uh, crucial uh, key words uh, will be co-creation, co-creation for uh, knowledge uh, research and uh, innovations. Uh, it's, it's, it's really uh, uh, significant. And then uh, we had already uh, two workshops, uh, one with the regional stakeholders and uh, another with members of the General Assembly of our university on a future university. And I would like to uh, highlight uh, some of the uh, main aspects, uh, uh, outcomes from these two workshops. Uh, one is already mentioned, this is that university uh, will be the strongest player in regional development. Already uh, uh, Pedro mentioned this point. Uh, then uh, second, a uh, very important international cooperation, uh, attraction of international students and researchers uh, to uh, small universities. Why? Uh, because uh, it's connected uh, with uh, intercultural aspects, cross-cultural aspects, uh, because uh, it will uh, generate uh, more uh, innovations and productivity. Uh, if we look to uh, uh, some uh, good uh, 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 cities who are attracting talents, uh, then it's very important, this international aspect. And the third point is uh, lifelong learning. Uh, it's connected with these living labs and short courses uh, for uh, adults in uh, different uh, ages. Uh, that uh, these trainings are uh, open uh, for everyone. And the uh, fourth uh, point, which I would like to um, uh, mention uh, from these uh, workshops, a uh, flexible study process uh, that uh, uh, COVID pandemic uh, demonstrates this opportunity that we must be uh, flexible uh, during our uh, uh, teaching and in cooperation. And uh, it, uh, it will be also uh, important in uh, uh, future. Uh, maybe uh, I would like uh, to add one uh, point from uh, myself also uh, that uh, in my mind in uh, future uh, uh, academic and professional programs will match that uh, it will be hard uh, to uh, divide academic study programs and uh, professionals. Uh, it's, it's my vision that in future uh, it will uh, match and uh, about um, uh, study process and uh, study methods. Uh, I think that the role of uh, professor teacher uh, will uh, change dramatically in next 10 years that uh, professor or uh, teacher uh, will be uh, more as a facilitator or a master. Uh, an uh, instructor uh, who will uh, join during uh, studies and uh, research. Uh, and uh, I will return to the second question about uh, the uh, small uh, university. Uh, I think uh, in our mind, uh, we would like uh, to keep our cities that uh, we are independent, uh, small uh, university, uh, that uh, we are uh, mm, uh, happy to collaborate in uh, different consortiums, uh, in, in, in such consortium and also in Latvia we have joined study programs between uh, three uh, universities, uh, but the autonomy uh, of the institution is very significant. Uh, it's not connected on, only with uh, financial resources, but also with our uh, freedom uh, to select uh, our research missions and study programs. Thank you, Radu. Uh, well, we, we have heard what would be the, the developments. You also put uh, quite a lot of attention to digital tools and uh, sort of uh, bringing new dimension. And uh, as uh, Agita also mentioned, there's quite a challenge for changing uh, sort of uh, character of, uh, of work in higher education. How, how do you see that uh, over the next uh, 10 years? That's a quite demanding step to come to to your staff and say, well, 
learning is going to happen outside of classrooms. It will be virtual. You will be more flexible, etc. It sounds interesting. Do you, do you share that? But also, how do you want to go there? Well, uh, I think that uh, to discuss that subject, we need to start from uh, our customers, which are our students. In fact, the university would not exist without its students. And uh, we are all aware that uh, the profile of our student is changing. These millennial students are want, uh, wanting to get everything quick, everything now, everything as easy as possible and to have everything uh, when they need it and uh, accessible from uh, where they are. Uh, this is something which uh, the digital technologies are able to address uh, quite quick and they are very well adapted for those because they are digital natives. Uh, so this is why I think that uh, these tools will uh, become more and more important. On the other hand, uh, to uh, fulfill our mission, it is not possible to say that we expect that our universities will become fully online universities and full digital. We need the present, the face-to-face -face meetings and uh, the part which uh, can be transmitting by the teacher directly. This is why I already said that uh, we see the future as a blended. Uh, learning uh, future, not as a uh, fully online or a fully traditional one. This is our belief. And uh, on the other hand, our students are wanting to get uh, uh, to work as soon as possible. They already get some experience uh, in our statistics or our master students are practically full time employed. Many of our uh, bachelor students are uh, working uh, sometimes full time from the third year of studies. So this is a reality and we cannot change it. We need to adapt ourselves to, to that. And uh, this is why our students are very well adapted for international cooperation. And uh, I feel that uh, joint programs uh, do, done in partnership between universities like uh, uh, the UDRAS uh, Alliance or whatever uh, else uh, could work. Yeah, it's something which uh, will uh, become more uh, important uh, in the future. Uh, also, working with companies and with uh, the industry will be a full benefit because, as I already mentioned, this will uh, allow us to adapt our curricula also to the needs of the companies, but also to the expectations of uh, our students. This is why I think that uh, international collaboration, uh, partnership, joint degrees, uh, micro courses, and so on will be more and more important in the future. Thank you. Well, all three of you uh, speak uh, about uh, close partnership with the uh, regional actors. Uh, and uh, I can understand that for you and your institutions, it is uh, quite uh, interesting to get connected uh, at the international level. How do people from your partner institutions see that? Uh, I can imagine that the regions might find that uh, interesting. How about the small and medium-sized enterprises? Because I believe that that would be probably quite a big uh, pool of uh, collaborating institutions. Pedro, ho, what's the what's the re reaction of uh, your regional partners? I uh, think uh, we are joining this uh, journey. Uh, of course, um, it's fundamental um, that we can get uh, the um, and explain the main, um, I will say, benefits from uh, from elders to these kind of partners, and uh, they really know that they can benefit a lot with three main things. First, it uh, uh, students or uh, um, uh, bachelors or master uh, alumni with better competences and more prepared for uh, labor market. So uh, for them, for the students to have this international experience, uh, it's uh, really good uh, for them. The second one is um, how they can, um, uh, I will say, join uh, uh, research projects that they can benefit to increase their competitiveness. 
And uh, it's quite uh, interesting how uh, the, the firms in our region are, um, uh, they want to collaborate in these kind of projects. We developed several, and I'm, I'm looking to the Patricia uh, uh, question, and we developed some uh, projects with them, internal uh, R&D projects in, uh, for our research centers, where it's compulsory to have students and um, firms or other organization uh, uh, in the application. Uh, and it's quite interesting because more and more the firms are um, uh, uh, sending us challenges for the students to develop and to try uh, help them to solve their uh, problems or their challenges. And we are putting this in our uh, training strategies. So that is uh, fundamental, which means that for the region, the more internationalized uh, uh, the higher education institutions are, they can benefit a more. And uh, in, 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 in the coffee breaks, uh, virtual coffee breaks, we discussed several projects where we can get uh, some synergies and to bring uh, firms and or, or other organizations uh, to these kind uh, of projects. And because we are small, and but for us, it's okay. It's not a problem for us to be small or medium in our uh, uh, countries. I think uh, elders can benefit us by uh, uh, these alliances. And uh, of course, uh, um, for us, th the type of um, uh, organizational uh, changes that we can do it uh, will benefit elders. But this is a challenge for us. Uh, organize, uh, the way that we will organize in the future needs to be co-created as well, as uh, Anne has referred uh, as a keynote speaker, but um, we need to fit. And uh, the project, we, uh, we are already fitted in this project, but of course this organizational challenge is fundamental for us to, uh, uh, I would say, to set up the idea of uh, a metropolitan campus or other uh, ways of organizing. But of course, this is a, a huge challenge in uh, organizational uh, uh, way. Thank you. Well, uh, I absolutely share the, the view that uh, probably that uh, uh, the, the role of higher education in the regional stuff, uh, development uh, is uh, growing. And we could have seen as well that one of the potentials is that in a number of regions, the, uh, the University of Applied Sciences or similar type of institution is quite often the main center of uh, existing expertise connecting the region to the academic expertise uh, on uh, the global uh, level with uh, other partners uh, allowing to bring a view of people who are specialized in things which might not be available in the in the region. Uh, Aita, when we come to the stakeholders, businesses, uh, research, you mentioned that uh, there should be some discussion about the indicators. There should be some discussion about the uh, diverse excellence and uh, understanding. Do you want to elaborate a little bit more on that and also see, say, how your partners see that? Um, yes, uh, I can add that uh, two or three years ago, uh, I and my colleague, uh, we conducted a survey in the region and we asked uh, to uh, businesses, uh, are they uh, uh, ready uh, to uh, enroll our uh, international students for the internship? And uh, then uh, we saw that uh, the numbers are not so high. Uh, actually, if uh, they need uh, to enroll them, and uh, then uh, we asked uh, other uh, questions if they uh, uh, support uh, that uh, we are working in international uh, field for uh, research and uh, developing this uh, international cooperation for studies. Uh, they said yes, of course, but uh, when we came to this uh, actual uh, question, uh, if they are ready uh, to enroll, uh, they uh, it it was a smaller number as uh, in, in general. Um, but uh, it, about the cooperation, uh, I would like uh, to split in our uh, two parts. Uh, uh, we have uh, companies uh, with uh, uh, we have a stable cooperation from year to year. We have very good uh, collaboration. Uh, we can uh, provide our expertise mm -hmm. for them. And if we need uh, some uh, support uh, 
uh, for uh, some uh, assessments uh, and evaluation of the university as they uh, come and uh, take part in these meetings. And then uh, we have another uh, type of uh, companies and institutions uh, with whom uh, we have uh, from time to time cooperation. In, in, in some uh, particular uh, fields or in, uh, for example, at the moment we have very close cooperation with our municipality uh, because uh, uh, we have uh, administrative territorial reform in Latvia and uh, we are uh, collaborating uh, to prepare a new uh, uh, governance models for new amalgamated uh, uh, municipality. And uh, then uh, another uh, a part of uh, companies uh, who cannot uh, see uh, these uh, main uh, linkages between cooperation because they have a different uh, uh, field of uh, um, uh, industry, for example, chemistry or uh, medicine, and uh, we have not uh, research and studies in a uh, uh, field, but uh, I think uh, it is uh, one of the uh, key points which we need to strengthen uh, in the uh, future, uh, this uh, collaboration uh, between uh, university and uh, uh, businesses in, in uh, different sectors, because we can also uh, find these linkages in, in, in companies who are uh, working in, uh, in another industry. Uh, we can give support for the management or logistics and marketing. Uh, yes, they are in place for uh, improving this uh, collaboration. Thank you, Radu. And the same, uh, the, the stakeholders, the companies, the, the region. What sort of uh, engagement do you expect uh, or what sort of enrichment do you expect to bring by the partnership in uh, UDRES? Because uh, I understood there's a quite a link, uh, especially looking at the technical background of your university. And uh, would you also within the, the forum, which we had a few days ago, we discussed that it might be probably quite helpful to sort of uh, adjust also the way how the research, innovation and development activities are perceived or uh, assessed uh, according to the applied uh, aspect of, uh, of this uh, partnership. W what would be the discussions in uh, your region in uh, Timisoara on that? Well, um, I will start maybe with um, what you mentioned at the beginning, the idea of small companies and uh, big multinational companies. I would say that uh, it is part of the changing because in the 90s, when uh, uh, we started the changes, the big changes in the educational system, the main drivers were the multinational companies. Uh, we already have a council of uh, directors, which uh, is putting together in the university uh, the main managers of the companies, uh, multinational companies in the area, and they are bringing their, their expertise and uh, their expectations and so on, which is a very good thing. But at the moment, there are also small companies which are becoming more and more active in uh, the relation with the university. And uh, I feel that in the future, probably the ideas like living labs, like practical training will be in many ways linked also to the small companies, not only to the uh, big multinational companies. The multinational companies are still the main, the main drive force for uh, putting our students together with the uh, real economy. Uh, we do projects together, we do mo most of our uh, uh, license and the dissertation thesis uh, in cooperation with the industry, which is very important. And uh, this is also by taking into consideration that many of our students are already working to those companies. But at the same time, uh, we put uh, very much emphasis and we still uh, think that in the future it is going to be even deeper the idea of interdisciplinarity, of uh, cooperating in different fields, and this is in many ways easier probably to be done together with uh, small companies. So this is probably part of the changes in the future to have more and more small companies uh, involved. 
Uh, it is, uh, how to say, very important for the university to have always uh, the feedback from uh, the industry and from the companies. And this is really valuable. And uh, of course, uh, many of uh, the representatives of the companies of, uh, are alumni of the university, which means that they know uh, sometimes very well uh, the realities of the university. But at the same time, we all have to learn together. We as teachers, uh, them as companies, because the profile of the young generation is changing. And we all need to work together in a way to put uh, something which is on the benefit and on the expectation of, of those uh, students. So it is uh, something very important and uh, um, also working together internationally, uh, I feel it's going to be easier because also our students uh, being uh, engaged to multinational companies already work in an international field and uh, also doing research and uh, working you know, to, to some, some, some very important uh, subjects, areas in research is uh, bringing together uh, interdisciplinarity. And this is something to be done in European partnership with other universities, but also with companies. Thank you. Uh, and I see that uh, Agita already started uh, in the chat as well, that collaboration and cooperation requires additional resources, uh, time and uh, energy, no doubt, no doubt. And that's uh, why I also asked the, the minister about uh, the funding. Uh, and uh, I think it will be quite still a challenge to uh, ensure the relevant sustainable funding for the European alliances from the national resources, from uh, other European uh, uh, resources. Uh, yeah, there's a question about the engagement of changing profile of young generation. And uh, that was basically quite something what I wanted to raise as the last uh, uh, round. Uh, I think it would be weird to discuss higher education without mentioning students, although it was uh, it happened uh, several times. Uh, but uh, we have heard several times that especially for professionally oriented higher education, the, where there are the different uh, placements, internships, uh, the, the students uh, are in the classrooms or in the school for a short time and come also sometimes from a little bit diverse uh, background. It's more difficult to engage the students in, uh, in life of an uh, institution. And how would you bring that even to the international level? What, what are the discussions within the UDRES about uh, engagement of student representatives? Uh, again, and the last uh, few words, Pedro, Agita, Radu, how do you see the role of students in all of this? I will say that it's fundamental. Uh, all kind of students, that's why um, the I have two, at the moment, in, in the life cycle of elders, there are two main challenges that we have, commitment and engagement. Uh, commitment for all the levels of organization, since the top level management to the teachers uh, uh, and, uh, of course, to the all uh, institutions and especially for the students. Uh, we need to put uh, our, the voice of the students into our decisions. It's fundamental to uh, hear from them and not to hear from them, but make them to participate. And uh, I will say uh, in, one, in one of our ideas, it's about entrepreneurship. Uh, and uh, of course, one of the main drivers for entrepreneurship are the students. So we need to put together, and at the moment in Portugal, uh, all the polytechnics uh, launch um, uh, uh, a national pro uh, project um, uh, with the demo approach, um, uh, when we put together students, firms, and teachers. So we we go to the, the firms and other organizations as municipalities uh, to uh, earn from them to challenges, and we put together uh, uh, different students from different type of uh, uh, levels of, of, of teaching, national and international, and working together to try to solve their problems. It's one way that we are changing our training methods, but of course we need to put more voices of the students in the decisions that we are making. Uh, just one example, at the moment we are developing a, a social responsibility strategies. We have a council of all the actors relevant for this strategy, where the students, the teachers, the management, the non-academic staff are involved. So 
this is one of our main challenges. We need to put together all the actors in defining according to the, their competencies to defining the future of our universities. Thank you. Agita, briefly, how do you see the, the, sort of the engagement of students within this multinational structure? This is very challenging uh, question, uh, but uh, I think that uh, the first, uh, it's very uh, uh, one of the uh, successful uh, ways is uh, to establish and to create intensive international study courses, for example, for one week on site. And it helps for this intercultural communication and also to find uh, different uh, innovative solutions for the prob problem. Uh, I uh, uh, run uh, several times uh, in, in, in such uh, courses. And uh, another uh, point uh, for the engagement, it's important to find a hot topic, relevant topic, and uh, then uh, to find a way uh, how to uh, involve students to contribute in, in, in this uh, topic. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Simple like that. Yes, uh, Radu. And there was a question for you as well. How do you, do you think that uh, you should engage the changing profile of the young uh, generation? So how do you see the students? Uh, yes, I will, I will try to answer uh, both together in a way. Uh, because uh, my feeling is that uh, when we had good results in changing something in the university was when we cooperated well with the student leagues. If you are trying to explain them and to make them uh, uh, responsible for something, uh, to understand what do you uh, want with uh, different measures, they are responding quite well, and this is going something which might be implemented and accepted by the student. Uh, so I feel that uh, they need some uh, responsibility, and they also want uh, that somebody is showing that uh, has confidence in them, in what they are doing. So probably uh, one, some of the measures which uh, we used uh, and uh, gave very good results were to engage students in um, actions like hackathons. Uh, we had hackathons with uh, a couple of hundreds of students, even uh, 600 in uh, an IT hackathon with international collaboration, which uh, gave very good results engaging them in um, innovation labs or similar things, uh, engaging them in communicating science with uh, actions like fame lab, where they are asked to provide some scientific uh, things in a couple of minutes and uh, so on. Uh, so the main thing which is bringing that is that they are cooperating between themselves and uh, with some others. And this is probably something which can put them together in cooperating in the, the practical activities. Because as I said, we see the future as a blended future. But the practical things will still to be face to face, always cooperation from the distance between different actors, students, companies, uh, small companies and uh, teachers. So this is probably uh, the idea which uh, will work for the future, at least in our view for the moment. Maybe we'll change these ideas in a couple of years, but for the moment we think that uh, this is uh, something uh, which will work for a future university. Well, thank you all. Uh, I see that uh, the, the discussion would have started. Do we have a real student participation or participation of a small number of uh, always the same active people. I'm afraid that we don't have the space now to answer that, but uh, I have to say that this is one of the themes where Eurasia wants to learn more. How do we engage the different group of uh, students uh, with different backgrounds uh, into life of uh, our type of uh, institutions? So, uh, well, we'll be happy to share that. I will try to come in 2030 and check how far you were from your uh, visions and uh, guesses and see where we will get with that. Well, thank you very much for your uh, participation, for your views. Thanks also for those who stayed with us and it's amazing uh, number of people. Can I just have a small promotion for tomorrow? We will focus uh, in, the, in this uh, chat with the other partners uh, on uh, smart specialization, the regional uh, dimension 
and uh, we'll see what are the specifics uh, of uh, UDRES when it comes to addressing the regions. But I would also like to use the opportunity to pr uh, promote uh, Eurasia annual conference, which will be on uh, 20 and 21st of May, looking at the, how we address the sustainability agenda. And I do that because we just launched today the, the registration. So, well, go ahead and uh, see you tomorrow. Yvette.